Beispiel ist und der Kyoto Universität führt um, our uh, speaker is Katie to use a series of lectures. Uh, so this is uh, Charles Bordenave, and that is at the uh, uh, ex Parse University. And uh, so his lectures are going to be about the spectrum of random graphs. So let me just take a few um, announcements. So first of all, we we uh, confirming the, the the power. Um, so the first lecture is uh, today, for two hours. Then uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday, each time is still hour. And then next week, on Monday. So in other words, there is no lecture Wednesday. So that's uh, that's it. And I think I I can. Um, Yield the stage to uh, to Charles. So, so please, Professor Bordenave. Um. Thank you, Professor Collins. Um, so, uh, I'm very happy to to give this uh, ten hours course uh, in Kyoto. Uh, during the course, so uh, we will see uh, random graphs and uh, be especially interested uh, by their spectral properties. Uh, before we start, uh, so I would like to encourage you to ask questions and stop me uh, if uh, something you know, is not clear. Uh, I should say about uh, references, uh, you will see on my uh, webpage uh, in the teaching um, uh, part, uh, I have some lecture notes which are called, I think, Spectrum of Random Graphs, where the first part of this talk, of this uh, course, will will be uh, very much inspired. Uh, for the second part, uh, I will give you the other references and um, uh, I will try to drop some references as we go. Uh, for the students who need credits, uh, the simplest for you is to contact me and I will give you uh, some exercise to do, which will be uh, mostly uh, like complete a proof of a serum that I didn't uh, where I only sketch a proof or something like that. Okay, uh, so let's start. So I will start with some brief uh, introduction. Maybe I can write. Uh, if my writing is bad, uh, I mean very bad, uh, I will try to make some efforts. Okay. Uh, so what we be uh, what we will study during this course? Uh, we will try to understand the uh, the, the rich connections. Uh, maybe I will try to use a smaller pen. The rich, oh, yeah, it's better. Uh, the rich connections between um, uh, a combinatorial uh, structure like a graph, and uh, and in particular its geometry. Uh, and the properties of spectral of uh, the spectrum of operators that you can that you can define on it. Okay, so the, the try to understand connection between the geometry of graphs and uh, their spectrum. Okay, I write spectra meaning it's a plural because uh, there are when, when you have a, uh, there are many ways to define the spectrum of a of a graph or uh, any combinatorial structure. And this will be done thanks to uh, local operators and we will choose one during the first part of the talk. But uh, okay, um, uh, there are various ways to do that. Uh, I should also say that we will focus on, uh, we focus on uh, large random graphs, uh, finite random graphs. By, la by large, meaning a, a, a graph which will have many vertices, but uh, still a finite number. Okay, and we'll be interested in the in the asymptotic where this number of vertices goes to infinity on large finite graphs, uh, random graphs. So, and the graph will be random, not so much in the first part of the talk, but of the course, but in the second part. Uh, so why should we do that? Uh, there are many motivations uh, which comes from uh, different uh, horizons, motivations. 
So historically, one of them, uh, uh, the driving force of uh, the study of the random graphs and the spectrum was theoretical computer science. Theoretical computer science. Uh, and also uh, some motivation from uh, statistical physics of disordered media. I will try along the course to give you some uh, disordered media. And uh, but there are also some motivation which which comes from uh, mathematics, like uh, geometric group theory, geometric group theory, or obviously probability theory. And uh, we also see some. Um, so and the, the, the list is quite long, so I will stop here. Uh, maybe I could I should mention data sciences where uh, there is uh, many uh, data uh, spectral algorithms which try to 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 to, find, to deduce from the spectrum of uh, a graph or a combinatorial structure some uh, geometric information contained in it. Okay, so I should say that this is a rich topic uh, in growing development. So in growing development. development. Uh, uh, so there are, we'll see some contributions. Uh, the contributions to this topic have been uh, numerous and uh, in various fields of math. So some of them uh, were, was on, probability, on, on the probability theory part. Uh, some of them were, were coming from operator algebra, operator algebra. Uh, others came from uh, uh, mathematical ideas from mathematical physics. Uh, uh, others came from uh, algebraic topology. And uh, the list is probably uh, even longer than that. Okay, uh, uh, so in 10 hours, what we, we try to do is only to, I will give you um, only a very um, uh, subjective snapshot of this field, okay? And the course, so as I already outlined, the course will be divided in two parts, into two parts, which are uh, complementary to each other complementary to each other, uh, two complementary parts. Okay, so the first one, I will, the first, maybe the second one, the part, the second part, which will be the last part of this talk, of this course, uh, will be, uh, we will study the, the edge of the spectrum. What does that mean? So we will define some operators associated to graphs. And we will try to understand uh, the properties of the eigenvalues of the largest eigenvalues. Okay, so these three properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and eigenvectors uh, uh, so extreme. So you should say extreme eigenvalues. So by extremal, I mean the largest eigenvalues and the large and the corresponding eigenvectors. So this will be the second part, and uh, this is the part which is more relevant to. Um, this is the part which is the most relevant for uh, data science and for uh, computer science. Okay, and also uh, in some in some, in some sense to uh, also to geometry group theory. And uh, the, the second part, uh, the, the first part, which will be the first one, uh, will be uh, the study of what happens at the edge, at the at inside the spectrum. Inside the spectrum. Where uh, we will study uh, uh, extremal eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, far from the edge. 
far from the edge. Okay, so we will start with that because it's in some sense the, the, the good order to consider. And this uh, is especially important uh, for uh, we you see IDs from operator algebra. Uh, this is also important from uh, the perspective of statistical physics of disordered media and so on. Okay, and also uh, we'll see a, a, a one tool from algebraic topology, which is interesting. Okay. So that was uh, this, this introduction. I should start uh, maybe with, uh, I can continue like that. I should start maybe with some preliminaries about what is a graph. Preliminary. Okay, so I'm trying to fix some notation on graphs. Uh, what is a graph? And at least what are the graphs which will be uh, interested in, in this course? Okay, so uh, the first definition, which, are, uh, which is the usual one, so what is a graph? It's a pair formed by some vertices, a countable set, which we call vertices. Okay, and some uh, set E, which is a subset of uh, pairs of vertices. I should say that this is unordered pairs. So for example, then we can represent uh, graphically a graph like that. Okay. And maybe this, okay. So you can represent a graph. This is the first definition of a graph. Okay, so the vertex set here is obviously a one, two, three, four. And the edge set is, uh, uh, okay, one, two, uh, two, three, okay, and so on. Okay, so I should, so this is an order. Okay, so maybe sometimes you want to consider ordered pairs. So then you have a directed graph, okay, when you have to, you represent it as a with arrow. So this definition corresponds to an ordered, uh, unoriented, sorry, uh, unoriented, or also the word undirected is used, simple graph. Okay, so what does this adjective of simple uh, refers to? It is that sometimes uh, you would like, uh, so I will make a picture. So this, maybe we would like, I will make first a picture. We would like something like that to be also a graph. Okay, so why is it not, maybe I will add a third one, why is it not a graph according to the first definition? It is because you have, multi, you have multiple edges. Okay, meaning that here you, you have three edges uh, from one to two and you have loops. Here you have a loop at two. A loop is simply a, 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 an edge which goes from a vertex to the same, very same vertex. Okay, so if you want to, so if you want to allow this to be a graph, then you have to. The proper notion is a notion of multigraph. Okay, where now E is a multiset. Multiset meaning that, contrary to a set, the repetitions uh, are allowed. Okay, repetitions. Are allowed. And also the repetitions are allowed in terms of the vertices. Okay, so here, uh, for in this case, the multiset would be, uh, you will have one, two, one, two, three times. Okay, it's a bit ugly to write, so you, 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 you never write it, but. Uh, okay, so usually this is called a multigraph. 
Okay, and the notion which is uh, important is the notion of edge multiplicity. Uh, so edge multiplicity. Multiplicity. Uh, what is that? Is uh, simply the number of. Uh, uh, so maybe I will just write the, the multiplicity of the edge one, two is uh, three. Okay. So this is the number of times, the number of uh, copies of one, two in the edge set. Okay. I don't write it. It's okay. So uh, when I will speak about uh, graphs, uh, usually I will, I will allow to be this more general multigraphs, but sometimes, uh, but usually it will be multigraphs. So usually when I speak about a graph, uh, I allow multiple edges and loops. Okay, And if I don't allow it, it just means that you have to change a little bit my definition. I think it makes sense. Okay, there is no real uh, dif difficulty by dealing with multigraphs. And uh, there is also uh, yet a further extension, which are weighted graphs. Weighted graphs. So what is a weighted graph? Uh, it's a simple graph. In the sense of definition one. Uh, it's a simple graph, sorry. Uh, and uh, where you define also, where you have a weight map, W, which goes from edges to uh, some uh, set omega. And uh, you have also a map, you have a weight for uh, edges, and you may also have a weight for uh, vertices. Okay. And a weighted graph is just you put numbers or you put colors. If you see omega as a set of colors, you, you attach colors to the vertices or the edges. Okay, so uh, multigraph are weighted graphs with integer values. Uh, with integers uh, where you take omega, you can write multigraphs as simple graphs where you put weights which are on integers. Okay, so these are kind of silly definitions, but. Uh, uh, it's good to, to have them clear. Uh, the, another notion which is very important are the, is the degree, the degree of a vertex. Uh, so when you have a graph, uh, so I should write x belongs to v. The degree is a vertex. Uh, what is that? So we denote it by tag of x, maybe sometimes I will write g uh, in option if to make, make it explicit, but it depends on the graph. Okay, so this is a number of adjacent edges. Okay, so for example, the degree, uh, the degree here, uh, the degree of one, is three. Okay, so degree, what is the degree of two? Oh, I've done difficulties to write, sorry. Uh, the degree of two, it's five. Okay, because loops count twice. Okay, so you just count the number of, out of six, sorry. <laughs> you just count the number of uh, outgoing edges. Uh, okay, so you have uh, some arcs and you, have, you can count six arcs around two. So the degree of two is six. So loops count twice. Uh, okay, so this was the degree, and um, so this was the edge multiplicity. Maybe I should put it in yellow also. Uh, okay, so our, the vertex set is countable. So, and uh, but in this course, we only speak about locally finite graphs. Okay, a graph. is locally finite if uh, for all vertices uh, the degree is finite. 
Okay, there is a nice theory of infinite graphs, but uh, they are very, uh, okay, I will not mention that here. And uh, a graph uh, as bounded degree or uniformly bounded degrees, as bounded degrees, if the supremum of all degrees is finite, if the supremum of all x in V of the degree of x is finite, okay? So, uh, we, the theory which we will present will be for locally finite graphs, but sometimes it's, it, it's usually it's much easier to deal with. Uh, it's uh, much easier to, to study. Uh, uh, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, it's easier to deal with uh, bounded graphs, okay, from technical perspective. Okay, and, and another notion, a graph is regular. Uh, a graph is regular if the degrees are all the same. The graph is, let's say, deregular. If for well, D is an integer, if for all x in V, the degree of, of x, I, I'm not sure I will manage to continue to write with this. The degree of x is D. Okay, so all degrees are the same. Okay, uh, more definition the so automorphism group. Uh, So you have a graph, you can define, uh, there is a natural group uh, associated to, uh, to the graph. It's a subgroup of the symmetric group acting on the vertices, okay? Uh, which, are, which is a group which leaves the graph invariant, okay? So this is a set of bijections uh, of, on V, okay, so it's a, it's a limitation, okay, such that uh, phi, which leaves the graph invariant, phi of G is G, okay. So to define phi of G, you have to see how the dejection acts on vertices, and it's in the obvious way. Uh, if you have a vertex UV, uh, its image, you define it as being uh, uh, phi of u, phi of u, okay? And you, you transport through the phi, the set with the edges, with their multiplicities. Okay, so this is, this is, this is a group, and uh, the graph is transitive. If, um, the automorphism group act transitively on the vertices, which means that if for all, if you take any pair of vertices, you can find an, an, an automorphism of the group, of the graph. There exists phi in automorphism of the graph, such that, uh, which sends phi of x to y, okay? And it, has, it is quasi-transitive, uh, this is also a useful notion. It is quasi-transitive if uh, the, there are only finitely many orbits. So what does it mean? Um, so if you have finitely, Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, so you define, uh, maybe I should, okay, I will see that later. Uh, you see, you define uh, an equivalence relation of vertices by saying that X is equivalent to Y if, 
you, with this also, if there exists a notomorphism which sends one to the other, okay. And then uh, finitely on. So, and then you say that it's quasi transitive if you have only a finite number of equivalence class for this uh, equivalence relation. For the equivalence relation. Oh, I have more and more difficulties to write on this computer. Uh, I will see if I have to change. I have another computer. Maybe it's, I will be more lucky with this one. Okay, so let's give some example of uh, graphs and uh, transitive graphs. Uh, uh, first one, a uh, classical one, are Cayley graphs of groups. Uh, uh, Cayley graphs. So what is a Cayley graph? Um, you take a countable group, a gamma a countable group, countable group, which is finitely generated with S a finite symmetric set of generators. Okay, so you have a a finitely generated group. So by symmetric, I mean that uh, X is in S is equivalent to uh, X minus one is in S, okay? And uh, then when you are in this situation, you can define a K, you can define a, a, a graph associated, which is called the Cayley graph of gamma associated to the generating set S, which is usually denoted by K of gamma and S. Okay, so this is, uh, there are two Cayley graphs, the left and the right. Okay, so usually people focus on the left because for traditional reasons. So the left Cayley graph is defined as follows. So uh, the vertex set, uh, the vertex set is gamma, the, the group, okay, and the edges, uh, you put an edge if and only if Oof. I really have some problem. Uh, if and only if uh, why? is equal to Sx uh, for some S, for some S in S, okay. Or if you prefer Y, X minus one belongs to S, okay. So this way you define a graph, uh, which is called the K graph. And uh, it's a simple lemma. Uh, I encourage you to do it. Oh. Okay, maybe I'm not sure if I can continue like that. Uh, a simple lemma is that the Cayley graph is a transitive graph. Okay. Uh, Another example of, of classical graph are percolation graphs. Um, which would be important for us. So you it's a, what you it's a random graph this time. So when you you you, you start with a graph. Okay. You fix a parameter p in zero one, okay, and you define perc of g p, okay, which is at the vertex set v 
an edges a set of edge now a random set so I write e of omega okay where uh, oh. sometimes where e uh, belongs to the random set e of omega maybe I could, I could put a p here it would be more clear uh, where e belongs to this random set uh, independently you put each edge you keep each edge independently with probability uh, with probability p Okay, so then you call you, you call this edge open, meaning that you keep it. So you put so you keep each edge independently with probability p. Okay, so this is called bound percolation. Bound is a percolation. So it's also side percolation, where you remove. Uh, uh, where a site is open independently with a site, so it's a, it's a synonym for vertex. You declare a site open or closed independently with probability p, and then when it is open, when it is closed, uh, you remove all edges adjacent to this uh, vertex. Okay, so you only keep. Uh, a site is open with probability p and an edge and e belongs to the if uh, both x adjacent vertices are open. Okay, so this is called side percolation, and the other one, the simpler one, is bound percolation. Okay, so in bound percolation, you keep each edge with probability p independently, and in side percolation, you keep each side vertex with probability p. So the vertex set is always the same vertex set, but then if your vertex is for keeping an edge, to put an edge in the side percolation, you need both adjacent vertices to be open. Okay, so we will see a much more example later. Okay. Uh, ah, yes, uh, maybe uh, an important example. If, if you take G, which is uh, the complete graph with n vertices, okay. Uh, so uh, the complete graph is just you put all edges. So I will define the, you put all edge. Oh, I've already. Uh, you put all vertices, uh, all possible vertices, okay, all possible edges, uh, and the vertex set is just uh, uh, the first n integers. Okay, so this is called the complete graph. Uh, so where was I? Okay, yes, yeah, so I was saying that uh, an example of site percolation, uh, of, a perc of bound percolation is uh, you take G, which is a complete graph on N vertices. Okay. Uh, so the complete graph on N vertices. Okay. And uh, then you just do the percolation, the bound percolation with probability P. And this you obtain a random graph, which is called uh, the other Schrödinger random graph. Which is more easily described by saying that you take any possible pair of edges and you keep it, you keep it with probability p and you remove it with probability one minus p. Okay, which is usually denoted by g and p for its uh, distribution. Okay. Uh, so now uh, let's speak, start to speak about uh, random uh, so to to speak about the spectrum. So uh, in this, uh, what we will try to do now is to define an, an object which we call the spectral measure of a graph, 
which will be the main uh, object that we will study in the first uh, part of this course, where we'll be interested by uh, the uh, interested in the what what happens inside the spectrum. Okay, so the setting is uh, as above. You take a graph. V is a is a countable set. Okay, and the graph is locally finite. Okay, so all vertices as as as, as finite degrees. And then you can define the adjacency operator, which is the most natural, uh, maybe the most natural operate, local operator that you can attach to a graph. Okay, so what is it? You define you you can define it as a, you define CC of V, which are the set of uh, which is a subset of L2 of V. So the square integrable function indexed by V, the countable set. And so this is a set of finitely supported functions, finitely supported vectors. So uh, you can speak about vectors of functions, finitely supported vectors. OK. Uh, so you, for you define the set of finitely supported uh, vectors, which can be denoted by CC of D, and then the adjacency operators, you can define it for as a linear map, as a linear operator, which acts on these uh, finitely supported vectors like that. You define a psi of uh, x coordinates, which is a set of all the sum of our origins. Uh, Which are of the form x, y of psi of y. Okay, so this defines, uh, so this, belong, this vector, this belongs to L2. Okay. So in matrix form, so it allows me to use some notation. If I take this, will be the, the vector of L2, which has entry one on X and all zero. So it's a direct mass, a vector of the canonical basis. If I look at delta X, Y, okay, which I will simply denote by X, A of X, Y, this is a multiplicity of X, Y. Okay, so if your graph happens to be simple, you put, uh, if you see your, your adjacency, if your graph is finite, and A is simply, you can identify A with matrix. And it's a matrix uh, whose, vertice, which, uh, whose vertices are indexed by the, with, uh, which, which, which is indexed by the vertices of the graph. And you put a one, if there is an edge between, uh, you put a one at a given entry, you put a one or a zero, depending whether or not you have an edge. Okay. Uh, so my graph is undirected, directed. So if my graph is undirected, A is symmetric, meaning that A X Y is equal to A Y X. Okay, A is symmetric. So this is the adjacency operator. Okay, so if the degrees are bound, if your graph has bounded degree, so if the degree of x is less than d for all x, then a extends to is in fact a bounded operator. Okay, so this is easy to check. You, you can even bound its norm if you look at the l. So this is the l two norm. Okay, square. What is that? Is a sum of all y. Uh, of maybe I should write e equal to x y of psi y uh, squared. And I should put a sum of x here. Okay. Then you use Cauchy Schwartz. Okay, so this is less than the sum over x of v. Uh, here you have 
times the degree of x times the sum of all e, uh, the same term, x, y of psi, y squared, right? And uh, then you use the fact that you, you, you switch the two sums, okay? Uh, and each term in this sum will, will, will appear at least, if you, if you fix now a y, the number of x uh, where it, uh, the number of x where, such that there is an edge between x and y is at most the, uh, the degree of y, okay? So in fact, you can bound that by degree square, okay? Because all degrees are bounded by d times uh, psi of y squared. Okay, so you have proved that this is d squared times the n2 norm squared. Okay, so the operator norm of A is bounded by D. So it's a bounded operator. Mm. Uh, okay. So uh, the adjacency operator is one of the interesting local operators, but there are others. So there are many other local operators that you can attach to a graph, okay? Uh, the most famous one are, uh, for example, you have the Laplacian. Uh, the Laplacian L, so the Laplacian, so including, so you have the Laplacian that you can write as uh, D minus A, where D is a day where D of Psi, so D is simply a D of Psi of X, the diagonal operator, it's just degree of X times Psi of X. Okay, so in matrix form D is simply the diagonal made the diagonal operator where you put on the diagonal the degrees. Okay, so this is a Laplacian. Uh, you have also the combinat what is called the combinatorial Laplacian. Combinatorial Laplacian. Uh, which maybe we can call delta. Uh, what you can write, okay, as d minus one half, d minus one half, if all degrees, if all degrees are at least one, okay, if all degrees are at least one, the this diagonal operator d is invertible, and the combinatorial Laplacian is written like that, okay. Uh, the combinatorial Laplacian is simply the is simply in disguise the transition kernel of the of the simple random walk because uh, the simple random walk, the transition kernel of the simple random walk is d minus one half okay so which is uh, d minus one which is which is uh, uh, similar to the combinatorial Laplacian okay so this is the transition kernel of the simple random walk of the simple random walk on G. Okay, so which is the, the, the process where you are the, it's a Markov process where you, at each time you, you are, the, vert, the state space is a set of vertices and at each time you move to uniformly at random among the, among the neighbors of the vertex one. Okay, so this is called the, the combinatorial Laplacian. And obviously, uh, it's also very interesting. And the, the Laplacian, in terms of probability, is also is a gen, it's an infinitesimal generator of the continuous time on the work on the graph. Okay, so these two operators, they, have, they are very natural from a probabilistic perspective. And uh, they also uh, 
contain a lot of geometric information on your graph. Uh, everything which I will say on the, in the first part of the course will be, uh, I mean, essentially everything I will say uh, in this course will be uh, uh, the same or almost the same for any kind of local operators that, such as the, those one, okay? But for simplicity, I will stick to the adjacency operator, but keep in mind that there is nothing very specific about the adjacency operator, okay? And also, if uh, your if the graph is regular, if G is D regular, so if all degrees are the same, then the diagonal operator is simply the, the scalar of the identity. It's a multiple of the identity, and uh, it commutes. Commutes. It commutes with the adjacency operators, which means that. Uh, if you know the spectrum of A, you will know the spectrum of delta and of L. Okay, so then uh, if you, you can study, if you study one, you study all these operators at the same time. Okay, uh, now uh, we'll do some a little bit of uh, spectral theory. So this was the adjacency operator. Now I will define the, what is called the spectral measure at a vector. Spectral measure. The vector. Uh, uh, so, how uh, does it? So, we assume first that uh, that the graph has uniformly bounded degrees. Okay, but G has bounded degrees. So, we define it. Okay, so the supremum over all x of the degrees is, uh, let's say, equal to d. It's finite. Then the operator a is bounded. Then a is bounded. It has bounded norm, and it extends to a bounded operator. Extends to the bounded uh, symmetric operator. On L two of P, okay. So okay. because I define the, the adjacency operator only on compactly supported function, because it could be the could be that if the degrees are, it could be that your graph is locally finite. But the domain, if if, if the degrees are growing, yeah, are not, if the supremum of the degrees is infinite, is a uh, it does not define. Uh, there are some vectors in L two of V such that A of phi does not belong to L two of of okay, so it's not certainly not the case if A is bounded. If the degrees are bounded, then uh, you can define the spectrum in the usual set in the usual way. The spectrum is a, it's a set, subset of the of the real interval. It's a complementary of the set of of complex number such that A minus Z is as bounded inverse, as a bounded, as a bounded inverse. Yes. As, uh, and it takes a complementary of that. Okay, so sigma of A in this case will be a subset of minus D. D. It's a closed subset and it's a subset of minus D. D. If the degrees are degrees or uh, is bounded. Okay, in general, it's a sub subset of the real uh, line. Okay, so the, sp the spectrum is a kind of uh, it's a crucial but a kind of rustic uh, information on the spectral decomposition of the operator. So uh, you can also define the spectral measure of the vector. So in the following way. So first, uh, I should recall you a theorem by uh, the risk representation theorem. So there are some. Uh, 
extension by Kekutani and Markov Kekutani. So let's call that representation zero. So I think the form I will write is due to Markov, but I'm not sure. Okay, so if you consider a linear map on the polynomials, which goes from the polynomial on the real value polynomial on R. Okay, so if you have such map, which is linear and positive, so positive means uh, what uh, I think you think that it means. It means that if P of X, if your polynomial is positive, okay, then L of P is positive, okay? So if you have such map, then you can always represent a, a such map as an integral over a over measure, a non-negative measure. So then there exists a measure, a non-negative measure. Uh, such that, uh, let's call that, let's call it new, such that for any polynomial, uh, P of X, L of P, sorry, is equal to the integral of uh, P of lambda lambda. Okay, so this is a risk representation theorem. Okay, so how does it, uh, why is it uh, relevant to define, uh, uh, so, uh, why is it relevant to define the spectrum of uh, an operator? Uh, so this is a very important piece, okay? Uh, and of course, if L of one, if the constant polynomial equal to one is one, then mu is a probability measure, okay? Okay, because if you apply that to P of lambda equal to one, what you require is that your measure is a probability measure. Okay, uh, so there, so this is an existence result, but certainly not a uniqueness result. Uh, it could be that there are multiple Markov. Uh, there could be that there are multiple measures which satisfies uh, uh, this relation, and this is tightly connected. This is real. This is this the existence of uh, a unique measure is very much related to uh, self-adjoint extension of bounded op of operators. Okay, so maybe I can write some, there are some classical relations. So if, if you take the polynomial, if you assume that the image of the polynomial, which is simply monic polynomial of degree 2K, if you assume that this is bounded by D power 2K, then mu is unique. And as, and as support included in minus dd, okay? So this uh, fact, I will leave it to you as an exercise. Uh, there are some more, uh, so let's call that mb2k. So this is a moment problem, uh, something which is, uh, much more difficult is the Kalman's condition, which is uh, a sufficient condition, which says that if the m2k power minus one over 2k, if this series diverge, then mu is unique. Okay. Okay, so coming back to our problem in particular. Okay, if you take phi a vector in uh, L2 of V or uh, okay, let's restrict to our compactly supported vectors. 
uh, then uh, you define L of pi, which is defined as for M polynomial, which is defined as P phi scalar product P of A phi. Okay. So this is linear. This is linear and positive. Uh, I say positive, but maybe I should say non negative. Uh, okay. So here it's a, maybe I should write non negative. So, because in French, we, we don't have the same convention. Okay, non negative. Non negative. Okay, is linear non negative because if you take, if P is a square, saying that P is a, is a positive polynomial meaning, means that it is a square of a polynomial, Q, then L of P, so which is phi. Q square of A phi, okay, using the fact that uh, Q of A will also be symmetric in self joint. This will be equal to Q A of phi, Q A of phi, which will be the L2 norm squared of phi squared, okay, which is of course uh, non negative. Okay, in part, and also if phi ends, if, if, the, if the L2 norm of phi is one, then there exists a probability measure. Which we call, uh, which is called the spectral measure. At vector phi such that uh, so such that uh, for any polynomial uh, phi p a of phi is equal to uh, the integral of uh, p of lambda. So I will denote this probability measure this way. Okay. So, uh, so this is called the spectral measure of vector phi, and if a is if a if if uh, the norm of a is bounded, if the norm of the operator norm of a is bounded, then this measure is unique. Uh, mu g phi, I put that mu g phi is unique, is unique and has support included in minus dd. Okay. So this spectral measure is, uh, in fact, contains uh, much of the spectral information that we will uh, try to understand on the, our graphs. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, it has some uh, interesting combinatorial interpretation. If you look at uh, Uh, a Dirac mass. If you do look at the Dirac mass at x, so x is a vertex, a of k Dirac mass at x, so by definition, so this is the integral of lambda power k d mu. So this is a case moment of the spectral measure at the Dirac mass. Okay, so, but if you expand the left hand side, the left hand side, you will see that this is exactly the, the number of closed walks. So I can write that gamma zero, gamma k, 
which, st which starts and ends at x, okay, and it's a walk on the graph, so meaning that gamma t, gamma t plus one is an edge of the graph, okay, from t to k minus one. Okay, so this is exactly the number of closed walks of length k in the graph is, is, are the moments of the spectral measure. Okay, so this is a combinatorial interpretation of this uh, spectral measure vectors. And also you have, uh, if you have done some functional analysis, you can, if you can also interpret these measures in terms of functional calculus. In terms of functional, of Borel functional calculus, okay, where you, you, you are allowed to define f of a for f um, measurable, bounded measurable function. Okay, so if you know how to define that, which you in fact do thanks to the this Markov representation theorem. Then uh, you can rewrite mu g phi of if E is a Borel set. You can, sim this is in, in fact simply the indicator function of E applied to A scalar phi. Okay. So I'm writing exactly the same formula but uh, in a more uh, operator algebraic uh, form. Okay, and the map uh, which goes the, if you define this map, uh, one gives e a this map, which goes from, uh, let's call that uh, p over The Borel set, which goes from here to um, uh, this is a project projection on L two of me. So this map uh, is called uh, maybe you can, can call that pi. So it's a projection valued. Uh, uh, Probability, uh, measure, it's a projection value measure. It's called the resolution of identity. Resol it's called the resolution of identity of A. Uh, and you, you, the way uh, formally you write that lambda is the analog of the spectral theorem that you know for matrices. You can write that, that the fact that uh, Hermitian matrices can be diagonalized in an orthonormal, or diagonal in an orthonormal basis. You can write that uh, as saying that A is an integral of the resolution of the identity. Okay. You can make a precise sense of that. Uh, I encourage you to look at the with Simon's classical book on functional analysis or uh, the uh, Gallison Ringrose, the first part of the Gallison Ringrose. Okay. Uh, for example, if you are in finite dimension, so if G is finite, all, all these objects, uh, so let's, let's say that the vertex set is one to N, then the, the meaning of this formula is an extension of this formula that you know, on the I, UI, UI star, where UI is an orthogonal basis of eigenvectors. Uh, and this projection, this resolution of the identity, you can simply write that as a sum of Dirac masses weighted by this uh, projection operators, which are ui, ui star. 
Okay? And our spectral measure at vector mu 5g is the sum of y2 and of the Dirac mass at lambda i times mu uh, i scalar phi squared. Okay, so I use the same notation for the Dirac mass and for the vector, which uh, would be one on the. I use the same Dirac mass, but I hope that it's not confusing for you. Okay, so if you are finite, uh, the spectral measure, if you are on a finite graph, is simply um, a sum, is, a, is simply a, a weighted sum of the of the counting measure of the eigenvectors and the counting measure and the weight you put are proportional to the orthogonal projection of the vector phi of the corresponding eigenspaces. Okay. Um, so this was a kind of uh, uh, crash course on uh, functional calculus. Uh, uh, so uh, we also uh, it's usually there is a resolvent operator which plays an important role in spectral theory. Why you define as R of z, which is a minus z minus one, for z not in the spectrum of a. Okay, and uh, thanks to this uh, this representation theorem, if you take the diagonal. Uh, term of the resolvent I mean, when you take the scalar product with respect to phi. This is simply uh, the integral of mu phi lambda, the spectral measure lambda minus z, okay, which is a Cauchy Stiglitz transform. So this transform is called the Cauchy Stiglitz transform. of uh, the measure mu g phi. Okay, so, uh, so I, this, okay, so, uh, so this was for in the bounded case. Uh, what happens when uh, the operator is not bounded? Uh, well, uh, everything extends in the unbounded case. So, this was okay. By that I mean when the degrees, the supremum of the degrees is infinite. Okay, then uh, it it extends there, but seems provided that the but the, but a is essentially self self adjoint, provided that a is essentially self -adjoint. So what does it mean? It means that its closure is equal to its, is, is, is it adjoint? Okay, so its closure is a, the smallest closed extension of the, the operator. So it is defined on a subset now of L2 of V. And uh, if this closure is self adjoint, uh, meaning that it's inverse space adjoint is equal to is equal to itself, then the operator is essentially self adjoint, and then everything I mentioned is properly defined for all phi for all vector phi which are in this domain, okay, which contains our finitely supported functions. Okay, so I don't want to insist too much on. It. Uh, essential self jointness, but uh, there is uh, there are some examples uh, of there are known examples of graphs which are locally finite, but yet they are not essentially self adjoint. So meaning the urgency operator is not essentially self adjoint. Uh, I should add, I should mention that for the Laplacian for uh, L is essentially self-adjoint. So Laplacian operator is essentially self-adjoint. In any case, if G is locally finite. 
So the Laplacian operator is a sim sim simpler in this perspective than the adjacency operator. But the assumption that your graph uh, is locally finite is sufficient to guarantee that it is essentially self function. Uh, for the adjacency operator, it is not the case. Okay. So there is something else to add. Okay, we will see some. Uh, but this, this will not be a major issue in this course. So. Uh, okay, I have uh, 15 minutes left. Uh, okay, next time. Uh, okay, so this was a kind of definitions. Uh, yes. Uh, so next time uh, we will uh, try to study more precisely uh, these spectral measure vectors. We will study them through examples, and uh, okay. And then I will introduce uh, the Benjamin Schramm topology, which will be a very central piece of uh, this course. Okay, so I think it's a good time if you have questions to if you have questions to ask. We have not seen much yet. But do not hesitate to ask me if you have any question on this part of the course. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, I have still have 45 minutes. Okay, but sorry, I was confused about time. I still have half an hour, right? But no? Um, yes, yes, you have until uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. 6.30. Okay, 6 okay. Ah, okay, okay, sorry, I was confused about time. Sorry, sorry. Which okay, is, I continue. Uh, but if you have question. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So I'm, I'm, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. So I will continue by saying what I would say. I will do this next time. But I will do it now. Uh, so now I will uh, mostly for uh, background. I will. There are some classical operation that you can make on algebraic operation that you can make on graphs, which translates into nice uh, uh, operation, which on the spectral measures. Okay. And this is what I'm going to describe now. Okay, so uh, so the first one is a Cartesian. So this would this should please the most algebraic uh, uh, part of the audience. Uh, but uh, okay. Uh, so the Cartesian product of graphs. How is it? You can How is it defined? Uh, you have two graphs uh, with vertices, so locally finite. Okay, and the Cartesian product of these two graphs is what uh, you think it is. So the vertex set is a cross is a Cartesian product of the two vertices. And you put an edge. And so x1, y1. Uh, so I will try not to. You put an edge between x1, x2 and y1, y2. Okay, so these are two elements of the vertex set of the Cartesian product. If and only if, uh, either x1 is equal to y1 and uh, x2, y2 is an edge of or the limit x2 is y2 and x1 y1 is an edge of y1. Okay, so it's easier to see uh, for simple, it's easier to write in terms of um, uh, adjacency operator. If you look at the adjacency operator of the cartridge, maybe I should make it. Uh, so for example, if this is g1 equal to g2, Okay, so the Cartesian product of these two will simply be a two dimensional grid. Okay. So this is G1. Okay, so the, the graph of ZD is simply the D times the Cartesian product of the graph of Z.
so in terms of adjacency operators, the adjacency part, the adjacency operator of the Cartesian product, you can write it as the adjacency operator of G1, tensor product with the identity on V2, plus the adjacency, the, the identity on V1, tensor product, the adjacency in G2. Okay, so this is a classical uh, graph operation, which translates into a, a standard uh, operation on, on the adjacency operators. Okay. And you have a lemma, uh, which is easy to prove, is that if you look at the spectral measure of the Dirac mass of x1, x2, okay, this is equal to the Dirac mass to the convolution between the, Dirac, the spectral measure at x1 in the first graph and the spectral measure at x2 in the second graph. Well, this is the convolution of probability measurements. Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, okay, just for, I will just write a very short proof. So just to be sure that everybody is familiar, so just to, this will allow us to, to see again the main definition. So you will write that the case moment, you want to, to identify the case moment. So the, the easiest way to, usually the easiest way to access to the spectral measure is to compute its moments. Okay, so, so then you use a definition, but this is simply the, uh, the combinatorial definition. This is, num this is the number of closed walks of length k starting at x1, x2. Okay, so it closed works in the, pro in, the, in the product. Okay. Then uh, you will write uh, that this is, uh, we'll count them in terms of how many steps in the first, because you see in the, in the definition of the adjacency uh, of the Cartesian product, when you make a walk in a, in such graph, either you are walking on the first graph and leave the other coordinate constant, or you okay, so you leave it, either you move along the graph one or you move along the graph two. You see it here in the definition. Either you move, either you apply the identity on v two or you apply the identity on v one, and in which case you you move in g one or in g two. Okay. So you can write that as a sum for L equal to zero to K of W L K X1, X2, which are uh, closed walks with L steps in G1 and K minus L steps in G2. Okay, so these are closed works in the graphs G1 cross product G2. Okay, so let's call this, this all the set of works as being G1, G2 of length K of X1, X2. Okay, now you can realize quite easily that if you have uh, Okay, maybe first I will write the formula, then I will comment. If you have an element, if you have a walk on the product graphs, which takes L steps in G1, I claim that the, the number of such walks is L choose K times the number of walks of length L in the first graph times the number of law of works of like k minus l in the second graph. Okay, starting at one x one. 
Okay, so the reason is that once if you have a, if you have a walk in G1 cross G2 of length K, which makes L steps in G1, you can associate it to it in a unique way. One pass in G1, one pass in G2. Okay, and then you have to decide the L choose K is all the possibilities for the the times at which you actually move on G1 and or and, and the times at which you actually move on G on G2. So if you come back to this formula, you arrive at this else moment of G1 cross product G2. So that mass of x1, x2 is simply the sum from L to the root k of L choose k times this. So but this you know that this is the else moment of the G1 direct mass at x1 times the k minus else moment of the direct mass at g2. Okay. And so then you obtain the this is a required formula for and so this is the else moment of the convolution of okay so this is this correspond to the else moment of the convolution of the two spectral measures okay and then if the moments coincide uh, the measures will coincide uh, if uh, there is a unique solution, so in particular, if our graph is is um, is a self adjunct so let's say that a bond, if uh, a of g one and a of g two self adjunct essentially self adjunct for example, bounded. Okay. Okay, so another <clears throat> another classical operation is uh, the tensor products, the tensor product of graphs. Okay, so for the tensor product of graphs, uh, it's different uh, the same way. So you define G1 tensor product G2. So the vertex set is again the product of G1 and G2. And then the, and the, vert, the edge set is uh, the product of the edges. So U, uh, X1. So maybe I simply write directly the a, G, I simply write the adjacency operator. The adjacency operator is simply the, the, pro, the tensor product of the two adjacency operators, okay? Which correspond that x1, y1, x2, y2 is an edge of the tensor product graphs if both, if x1, y1 is an edge and X two Y two is an edge of the first one and of the second one. Okay, so this definition is okay for simple graphs, for multiple graphs, you have to be careful that the, the, the proper definition will give you this tensor product. And then in the same way you have a lemma. Uh, uh, maybe uh, okay, I will make this comment after. You have a lemma that the if you do the tensor product of two graphs and uh, look at the spectral measure, but this is simply the multiplicative uh, convolution, which I will not like that, where uh, uh, if x has low mu and y has low mu, and x and y are independent, Uh, mu dot mu is a law of the product. Okay, so this is the same proof, it's in fact easier. Uh, a comment, for example, let what is a, 
what is the tensor product of z with itself. So when I mean the tensor product of z and the, just the, the line of z and itself. So it, you, what you will obtain, so maybe I write copies of z, I write z2, so the vertex set is z2. Okay, now let's see, uh, change color. Here, uh, you have a vertex. Okay, so in the tensor product, it will be connect, this vertex will be connected to this guy because this edge, this in both sense. So this is an edge of the tensor product. Okay, and for the same reason, so this one, this one, this one. This one. Okay, and so what you see if you repeat this construction is the tensor product of Z with itself will give you two connected, two copies of Z2. Okay, because you have one, but if you look at uh, vertices whose sum, is, whose sum of coordinates is odd now, you will obtain another copy. Of okay, I'm sorry, my picture is bad, but you see that it's a two copies is isomorphic to two copies, two, two copies of z squared. Okay, as a consequence, you obtain that if a new is a spectral measure at the direct mass at the origin of z, okay, the convolution of new of itself, so the regular convolution, the usual con the additive convolution is equal to the multiple to the convolution of the, of the product. Okay, and uh, it's an exercise. So, star implies that new is arc sine distribution. So, for those who need credits, uh, if you solve, if you send me a solution of this exercise, I will be happy to give you uh, the credit. So, the new. Is arc sign distribution. Uh, so I have somewhere on the density of the arc sign. Uh, I think it's, yes, it's one over pi dx, which is indicator of middle of x less than two of one over pi four minus x squared dx. Okay. So the fact, so without making any computation, uh, we could compute the spectral measure of the integer on the integer line is the uh, arc sine distribution. Okay. Uh, there are many other algebraic operations. Uh, okay, I shouldn't spend too much time on that because it's uh, uh, a bit side of the talk, but I mentioned uh, there is, for example, the free product of graphs. Product of graphs. Uh, okay, so it, the graph should be rooted. Okay, so what does it mean? A rooted graph is a graph, uh, a rooted graph, P O. It's a rooted graph. So it's a definition. It's a connected graph, is a connected. Uh, I didn't, I never mentioned what is a connection. Connected uh, is a connected graph. Connected meaning that there is a path between any pairs of vertices in the graph is a connected graph with a distinguished vertex. Oh, which is called the root. Okay, so it's a pointed graph if you want. It's a graph point where you point, uh, which has an origin, okay, which you call the root. Call the root. Oh. Oh. Okay. 
so when you have two rigid graphs, you can define their um, their their free pro their free product. So I will make a picture because uh, if you can look in my notes if you want a formal definition. So so I should be, let's say well this is my first graph and this is the root. Okay, so this is O1. And let's make not a too complicated one. And this is G2, O2. Okay. How do you define the free product G1, O1, free product G2, O2? Uh, so this is a free product. So it's a bit, uh, I, will, I will make it, I will just define it on a picture. And if you want a formal definition, you can look in my notes. What does it mean in words is that you glue at each uh, vertex of, let's say, G1, you glue a copy of G2 and, uh, and vice versa. At each copy of G2, you glue a, co you glue a, co you glue a copy of G1. Okay, so let's try to picture it. So I start with G1, say, where the root is here. And now maybe I will change color. Now I glue a copy of G2 at each vertex. So this now, this is a root of G2. Okay, so I've, I've glued a, a copy of G2 at each vertex of G1, and then I repeat this procedure. Now at each vertex of G2, I repeat, uh, I, I glue a new copy if it's not already present. And so I obtain something like that. Yeah. Okay, and now I repeat. So, so probably you, now you understood. Oh, I forgot one. I forgot that one in the previous round. Okay, it's on. So you see, even with, when you take the contrary to the other uh, group operation, to the other uh, operation, uh, even when you start with finite graphs, it's quite clear that you end up with infinite graphs. Okay. So this is the beginning of the free product. And what you obtain is that uh, you have a lemma. There is an algebraic operation on measures, which is called the free convolution. And uh, it says that as a, a consequence of that is there is a, if you want to compute the spectral measure at the root, so let's call that the root of uh, this new graph, is a free convolution of the spectral measure of G1 conjugated with G2. If you don't know what is a free convolution, that's fine. Uh, uh, I can make some reference. There is a book by Mingo and Speicher on free probability. And there is a, a recent work, uh, which I'm happy to mention. By Garsala Vargas, Garuna Vargas. And uh, Kulkarni. So it's an archive in 2021, where they, uh, they present a, a related graphical construction and explain how you can compute spectral measures. Okay. And if you uh, like groups, uh, if if you consider the free group, if gamma and if gamma one and gamma two are groups, if gamma one and gamma two are uh, finitely generated groups, finitely generated groups. Okay, and gamma, which is the free product, which is our free product. Uh, then uh, the Cayley graph of uh, oh, okay, SI is a generating set. Generating set, which is symmetric. In the case where GI is a Cayley graph of gamma I with SI, uh, then the free product, uh, 
the free product. So let's call uh, O i the root the the unit of each group. If you look at this free product of groups, this will correspond to the Cayley graph of uh, yeah of the free product of the two groups with generating set. Uh, 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 the disjoint union of S1 and S2. Okay, so if you are, if you like groups more, most uh, this um, free product uh, is just uh, the correspond exactly to taking free products of groups is exactly the analog of taking free product of uh, this taking free products of groups is the same as taking free product of uh, groups. Okay. Okay, now uh, we would like to make some, so for finite graphs, um, we will like make some more precise uh, explicit compu computation. So, uh, okay, so now I want to, we will make, make some computation and, uh, but before that, uh, When my graph is finite, so these spectral measures are pointed. So that it means it's a spectral measure which is associated to a vector, uh, to a specific vector. Okay. Uh, but let's, in the case of the, a finite graph, so let's consider a graph which is finite. There is a very natural probability measure which is not pointed, which is the empirical distribution of the eigenvalues, okay, which is we define mu of g, which is the empirical distribution of the eigenvalues. Okay, where lambda one, lambda n are the eigenvalues of counting multiplicities case. Okay, so this spectral measure, uh, which, is, which, which is usually called the spectral measure, which also calls the empirical distribution of eigenvalues. The physicist called it the density of states. Okay, uh, as a huge advantage over our spectral measure at vectors, but it is in, but it is unitary invariant. Okay, it does not depend on the eigenvector base. It does not depend on the eigenvectors of of the of the adjacency matrix G of G. Okay. So we would like, what we will do next, we will try to define an analog of this object for uh, our infinite graphs, okay? Uh, but first, uh, let's try to make the, the, we should try to first to understand the connection between this guy and our spectral measure, okay? At the point, at vectors. No, should not do that. Why is it so small? Okay. Uh, so you have we have that mu g is also the average of the spectral measures as a vertice. It's also the spectral, the spatial average of the of the pointed spectral measures. Of spectral measures at vectors. Okay, so sometimes I will call it, uh, so this I call it the spectral measure, but sometimes I will call it the average spectral measure to make the difference with the spectral measure at vectors. Okay, indeed, so wh why is it formula true? Indeed. Uh, what is the sum over all x in V of mu g Dirac material x? If you recall the definition, I reproduce the definition with the sum of the Dirac mass 
at i of uh, delta x scalar product with uh, ui, where ui is an orthogonal basis of eigenvector square. Okay, now I use Pythagoras theorem. This is an orthogonal basis of eigenvectors. The sum of, Dirac of delta x is an orthogonal basis, so this is equal to sum of delta i. Okay, so you obtain this formula. So we have this fabulous property that despite the fact that the spectral measures and vectors, they depend on the eigenvector basis, okay? Uh, so they, are, they contain information on the eigenvalues and on the eigenvectors. When you take the spatial average, you only you washed out completely the eigenvectors and you only, only keep information on eigenvalues. Okay, uh, we, can we can make some explicit computation of, uh, for example, just uh, to have some concrete example, if you have the cycle, uh, cycle of lengths n, let's call that cn, if you have uh, n vertices. Okay, so you can write this adjacency matrix. What is the eigenvalues of that? You can write a as s plus s transpose. A star where s is a mate is a mate is this matrix. Okay, it's a permutation matrix. And so the, the eigenvalues of s are the roots of unity. So the lambda i of s are the uh, maybe it's indexing by k are the e i two pi k over n. Okay. These are the eigenvalues of S, so S, the so eigenvalues of A, since S and S star, they commute, um, because it's equal to the identity. The eigenvalues of A are the combination of the, eigen, of the eigenvalues of S and S star. So the eigenvalues of S star are just the, con the conjugates, um, the conjugate of the eigenvalues of S. So the eigenvalues of K, of A, are the real part, are the two cosine of two pi k over n. And we will use that the empirical spectral, the spectral measure of the circle, of the circle of length, of the cycle of length n is just uh, the sum of Dirac masses at cosine. Okay, when n goes to infinity, this will converge to the arc sign now, which I already mentioned. Okay, which I, it's also the law of uh, two cosine two pi u with u uniform on zero one. Okay, so this convergence is for the weak topology. Okay, it's the same way if you consider the uh, line segment. Uh, if you consider the line segment of length L, uh, the eigenvalues, it's an exercise. The eigenvalues are the two cosine of two pi k plus, uh, sorry, I have to look, uh, it's k over n plus one, I think. One for k going to one to n. We also deduce that the, the spectral measure, the empirical distribution of the eigenvalues of the line segment converge also to as n goes to infinity. Okay. So due to that, you know you know how to make the you know how to what are the eigenvalues of uh, take a torus a d-dimensional torus. A discrete dimensional torus, its eigenvalues are just uh, the, the obtained by taking the convolutions of this arc sine law in the limit. Okay, uh, more interesting. Now, this was for a finite graphs. Now we can, uh, now I have only 10 minutes. Uh, okay, I start with uh, this spectral measures of Cayley graphs.
Uh, okay, so we define already what is what was our curly graph. So uh, we have our gamma uh, countable finitely generated group. S is a finite generating set, a symmetric finite generating set. Okay, so you can write uh, in this case the adjacency operator. Uh, so, and let's say G is a Cayley graph of gamma associated to the generating set S. Okay, then the adjacency operator, you can write it in a uh, in terms of the of the uh, regular representation of the group as a sum, the adjacency operator. So it's an operator which is which acts, uh, we call you on L two of gamma. It's a bounded operator on L two of gamma. And you can write it as a sum of the lambda g, where the lambda is a left regular uh, lambda g. It's a left regular uh, representation. Okay, which simply is a multiplication operator, lambda g of a Dirac mass at uh, h, uh, g and h are elements of the group, is simply the left multiplication by g, it's Dirac mass at g and h. Okay, so if you uh, recall the definition of Cayley graph I gave you at the beginning, the adjacency operator, you can write it in a more uh, uh, Different way as a sum of the lambda of g, okay. And as you as, a, as such, it, it's now apparent that a is an example of uh, is a belongs to, a, to the group algebra, is an element of the group algebra. Okay, I should say left group algebra. Uh, the left group algebra, uh, which is generated by uh, which is an algebra that you that you generated by the lambda of g with g uh, in g. Okay. And uh, this group algebra generates uh, this group algebra. Uh, generates a uh, uh, fundamental a fundamental algebra, which is called the fundamental group algebra, which I will denote by M. Okay. And uh, we have a trace, we have a tracial state on M, which is called, which we denote by Tau, where T. So if you don't, if you are not familiar with fundamental algebra, let's just say that this is a completion of, uh, uh, of uh, the group algebra, it allows, okay, let's focus just on the group algebra. This trace is also a trace for this uh, group algebra. So if you have an element of the group algebra, let's call it tau, tau of, of t is uh, defined as a Dirac mass at uh, one, uh, O, let's call O the limit of the group, O limit of gamma, t Dirac mass at O, okay, and um, uh, with this formula, uh, so it's a tracial state. It's this tracial state, meaning that uh, tau of um, so it's a linear map. Uh, it's a, it satisfies that tau of t bar of t star is tau of t bar. Uh, it satisfies also that tau of t t star is non negative and equality equals zero if and only if t is zero. And, uh, and it's tracial, meaning that t of a b is t of b a. And uh, it's normal, also, meaning that uh, if you have an increasing net, if uh, t alpha is an increasing net to of which converge to t uh, to which is its largest number converges to two of t. So uh, normal just means that we can make sense of the it satisfies uh, the Merton uh, 
convergence theorem. Uh, okay, so, and then you can write in terms of this, um, uh, you, your, your spectral, your, you, you can define the, the, spe the, the spectral measure of the group of the graph G, okay, which you can define it as, uh, since your graph is transitive, this measure, this spectral measure, for any group element, since it's transitive, I recall you that the moments of this measure are just the, the closed works on the group starting from X. But since your graph is transitive, uh, this spectral measure does not depend on the choice of X, okay? So you, the common, this measure does not depend on the choice of X and you call that the spectral measure, okay? This is also called in this context, the Planck-Schmidt measure. And the spectral, the moment, and the, the moment, for example, of the, of the spectral measure, the new G lambda, are simply in terms of the trace and moments of the operator A. Okay. So in other words, the distribution of A in this group algebra, meaning the collection of all its moments, is encoded by its spectral measure. Uh, I have to stop now. So next time we we'll see some uh, computation of spectral measure of K graphs and uh, we'll continue. Okay, thank you. If you have questions, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Are there any questions? So actually, I there was a question in the chat from uh, like um, 25 minutes ago from uh, <laughs> now. Okay. Kajino, do you want to, Kajino san, do you want to? Well, so it, well, it's, it's just to confirm the definition of the of the tensor product of graphs. So, in a few yes. pages ago, there was yes. yes. So, yeah. so the the definition of the edge, the edge is is written in the middle, right? And I guess it's it's not very correct. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Yeah, I said in the when I was thinking, it's for simple graph. For simple graphs, it so you will put an edge if and only if you the two edges are present. No, I mean well here well you are writing well x. So here in I guess the x one is in the first component and y one is in the second component, right? Yes. And then, well, x1, y1 belonging to e1 doesn't make sense. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Maybe, ah, okay, okay, now I understand. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, it's just that I... Oh, yeah. X1, x2, y1, y2. Okay, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, now it makes sense. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you have to keep in mind it's just a tensor. So in terms of adjacency operator, it's mm -hmm. just product, tensor okay. product. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> so um, <coughs> I suppose that the, that the students uh, who need credit uh, understood that they should uh, email uh, uh, to Professor Bordunav. So, um, can we just catch your email on, uh, like, do you want maybe, maybe next tomorrow you can just uh, put it on uh, on the chat or, or type okay. it here. It's even better. Sure. Uh, okay. And sh can I share my slide somewhere? Or? You could, sh yeah, if you want, we can uh, organize that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, we can figure out a way to share them if, if you want to, to send them to me. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, so see you tomorrow. So, okay, so then uh, that's it for today. Thank you and see you tomorrow at <clears> the <throat> same time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.